Welcome people, I am here with Notes Explained, help you solve your chapters with notes. But before that, do share with your mates if you think it's helpful and for more notes and notifications, subscribe and press the bell icon that is present just right below. Today, I am here with a very interesting chapter that is Nelson Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom. It was written by Nelson Mandela himself. Since the chapter is very confusing, where the points are all jumbled up, so why not learn it in a systematic manner? So let's start with the Anglo-Boer War. Here, Anglo means the Britons and the Boers means the South African Republic and the Orange Free State. Now always remember that two wars were fought between the Britons and the Africans. At first, the Africans won, but in the second Anglo-Boer War, the Britons won. And since the Britons won, now they started to dominate the Africans. And here starts the struggle of the Africans. As the Britons won the war, so also they started their rule in Africa. They oppressed them. No freedom was given. Human disaster existed. They were considered as outlaws. There was continuous bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender and other discrimination existed as well. The Britons not only tortured the Africans, but they also followed a system called apartheid. Now, what's the meaning of apartheid? Apartheid is a political system where the people were separated according to the race that they belonged to. People were classified into four categories, that is, the whites, blacks, Indian, and the color. The whites were given special importance, but the blacks, the Indians, and the color were not at all given any importance. Now, do you think that the Africans tolerated so much torture? Don't you think that they fought back? Yes, they really got very angry. And how much would they endure all the pain? So, some of the very courageous people who fought for the country were Nelson Mandela, Oliver Tambos, Walter Sisulis, Chief Luthulis, Yusuf Dadus, Bram Fischers, Robert Subukwis, etc. As we have seen some of the freedom fighters of the time, so let's know more about one of the freedom fighters who was Nelson Mandela. He was a person who was born on 18th July 1918 and he died on 5th December 2013. He was a great freedom fighter. He was also a member of the ANC, that means African National Congress. Do you know how for how many years he stayed in jail just because of fighting against the British? He stayed for 30 years and he was released in 1990. Later, elections were held and he was elected as the first black president in 1994. And after coming out from the jail, he also wrote his autobiography that was Long Walk to Freedom. Now, election was held for the first time in Africa and it was held on 27th April 1994. Here, 252 out of 400 seats were won by ANC, that means African National Congress, and Nelson Mandela was elected as the first black president, and he remained in the seat from 1994 to 1999. Again, the first deputy president was Thabo Mbeki, and the second deputy president was F.W. de Klerk. So do you think that the Africans will just start ruling the country just like that after elections and after selecting the ministers they want to rule them? No, not at all. They had an inauguration and it was on 10th May 1994. It was held in the Union Buildings Amphitheater in Pretoria, where more than 140 countries, politicians and dignitaries attended. Nelson Mandela was accompanied by his daughter, Zanani. Also, the first and the second deputy presidents were also present there. At first, the deputy presidents had their oath. Later, the president took his oath for the country. As the Africans were now free from the shackles of the British rule, they made a grand arrangement for the inauguration. They were very much excited. The South African jets, the helicopters and troop carriers made various patterns over the Union building. It was a military demonstration of the loyalty to democracy or to a new formed government. The highest generals of South African Defence Force and the police, they saluted Nelson Mandela. We can also see a chevron of impologists. They made various patterns using the smoke. They also made the South African flag using the smoke. The new flag was black, red, 
green, blue and gold in color. Two national anthems were also sung on the day. Nikosi Sikalal E Africa was sung by the whites and Diastem by the blacks. It was now time for Mandela to take the oath after the first and the second deputy presidents took their oath. On this day, he conferred glory and hope to a new pawn liberty since they had achieved political emancipation. On this day, he pledged to liberate the Africans from continuing bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender and other discrimination. Because though they had gained freedom, yet many people were still poor, they were still suffering. He even promised the South Africans that their country would never, never experience oppression by any other country. And he said that though Africa was in dark years all these years, now it would not remain any more dark. The sun would never set in Africa. And he prayed to God and asked for God's blessings in order to bless Africa and the Africans. Did Mandela take only the oath? Or did he say something else also? Yes, he even says some other things also. Now, what do you think he may say? He not only conferred glory and hope to a newborn country, but he felt utmost regret for he was not able to thank the African patriots who had sacrificed their life. He was very thankful and grateful to all the South African patriots who had worked very hard in order to liberate Africa. He was really very grateful because he was the sum of all the African patriots. Now, in the whole process of freedom struggle, what are the various things that this freedom fighter, Nelson Mandela, had learned? He had learned many things from his comrades and from others. From his comrades, he learned the meaning of courage. He slowly and gradually learned how people were courageous enough Though they were tortured and humiliated in a very bad way by the British, yet they did not lose any hope. They constantly fought against them in order to liberate the country. They were very much determined and they did not step back. They were instead very upright in their decision. They took the decision that they want a liberate country. That means they want it. It may be by hook or by crook. They really wanted to be free. And it was from this how he learned to be brave enough and to conquer fear rather than to be scared enough. He learned to be courageous from his comrades and from others. He learned about nature. Now, what nature did he learn? Let's see. He said that no one is born hating another person. Why so? Because he saw that innocent child doesn't know how to hate people just because of the color of the skin, his background, religion, caste, creed, etc. But gradually, when the child grows up, he slowly and slowly learns to distinguish it. That means what? They were taught to hate each other? He also said that if people are taught to hate each other, then they can also be taught to love. He also believed that men's goodness is a flame that can never be extinguished. He believed so because in one of the instances when he and his friends were sent to prison, he could see a glimmer of humanity in one of the guards who was supposed to behave very badly with them. But he saw in one of the guards that he started to behave in a good manner. So he started to believe that men's goodness can never be extinguished because though the man may be good, but it remains hidden due to the bad influence that he has upon him. As we are born, so also we have many duties and responsibilities towards our parents and families and country. So also, Mandela believed that a man has twin obligations in his life. That is, the first one is obligation to his family, to his parents, his wife and children. And the second obligation to his people, his community and his country at large. But do you think that the Africans were able to fulfill their obligations towards their families and country at large? No, not at all. As I said earlier, that the Britons followed the process of apartheid, where the people were classified into four categories, the whites, the blacks, the Indians, and the colored. So, if the whites were given special importance, the blacks, the Indians, and the colored were not given any importance at all. So, how could they fulfill their obligation? They were not free. They were oppressed. They were insulted and humiliated. 
Now, another very important point that we would now learn is about freedom. Now, what was the meaning of freedom according to Nelson Mandela? It meant different things for him because at different stages of life, he experienced different things. In his boyhood, student, as a young man, and when he joined ANC. Now, his experience of freedom is different in all the topics. When he was a boy, he enjoyed freedom because at that moment, he did not know that freedom for him was only an illusion. He did not know what was going around Africa. At that moment, he enjoyed freedom. He was free to run in the field near his mother's hut, free to swim in the clear stream that ran through his village, and also free to roast millets under the stars and ride the broad bags of slow-moving bulls. When he was a student, freedom meant different things for him. Now, he wanted freedom only for himself, the temporary or the transitory freedom of being able to stay out at night, to read what he pleased, and to go where he wanted to, just as students want to be. He grew up from a boy to a young man. Now, freedom for him meant various things. He yearned for basic and honorable freedom for achieving his potential. He wanted to earn more and more. He wanted to marry and have a family. He wanted freedom not to be obstructed in a lawful life. As he was a bit major now, he slowly and gradually realized that his freedom was only an illusion and all the people of Africa were not really free. He tried to understand the things and he began to hunger for freedom. Now what happened when he joined ANC, African National Congress? Did he want for more freedom or did he stop wanting freedom? At that time, he realized that not only he but all the Africans were suffering. They were not getting any freedom. Everyone's freedom were curtailed. Then Nelson Mandela's hunger for freedom became the greatest hunger for freedom of all his people. He believed that freedom is indivisible and chains on any one of his people were the chains on all of them and chains on all of his people were chains on him. He also had the opinion that a person who takes away another man's freedom is a prisoner of hatred. He is locked behind the bars of prejudice and narrow-mindedness. And he also said that one is not truly free if he takes away another man's freedom. So, these are some of the various points that he had regarding the single topic, freedom. So now let's see what had really animated Nelson Mandela, or we can also say what had really inspired him to rise up to such a level that he became the first black president in Africa. At first, we have seen that when he was a boy, he did not know what was freedom. But slowly and slowly, when he became a major person, he realized that he was really not free because the Africans were under the British rule. Now, he had a strong desire to bring freedom to his country. He wanted to live with dignity and self-respect and wanted an independent country. In the process of the whole freedom struggle, we have seen how Nelson Mandela had transformed himself. At first, he was a frightened young man who had turned into a bold one. Secondly, we saw him as a law-abiding attorney who strictly followed the rules. But later, during the struggle, he had become a criminal. Thirdly, we can see that he loved family very much. He was a family-loving husband, so to say. And now, he became a man without home. And lastly, he was a life-loving man. Now, he is transformed into a monk. So, at last, after reading so much about Nelson Mandela and the Africans, we can say that he was a truly patriotic person who had really sacrificed his life just for the good and betterment of his people. The people had seen how Nelson Mandela had really worked very hard for their country. They also saw that how he devoted his life and was determined enough in chasing the Britons away. And finally, they voted and elected him as the first black president of a non-racial, democratic and republic government. I hope by now your doubts and confusions are clear. But if you want to clear more or you have more doubts, just comment below so that I can listen to you and would try my best to clear your doubts. So all the very best students, hope these notes may help you in scoring good marks.